sava boe tu sava mukama ulira boe tu sava boe tu sava boe tu sava mukama ulira Sula fortu cha alide pas mi non to gento sevia i a humble cry while on others thou art calling do non pa as a spy
ogenda tu. <laughs> Tata tusasire. Tata tusasire otusonyoro tani tukire owame. Tata obujemu bobunji na yetu sasire otusonyo. Omoyo mtuku tuyambe nge gwanga. Tata tuyambe nge gwanga. That is not the Uganda you created. That's not the Uganda we want. That's not the Uganda we are going to develop. That is not the Uganda we want to go back to. Heavenly Father, intervene. Lord, come and intervene. You're the only one who changes man's heart. We can't force man to change the way he thinks, the way he wants to do things. Lord, forgive us. Lord, forgive us. Lord, forgive us. <laughs> because the penalty for rejecting God is death. Lord, forgive us. Lord, forgive us. We haven't listened to you. We've done our own things. We've pretended to know too much. And we've neglected your word. Father, forgive us. We've engaged in our own grudges and wrangles and fights. Instead of coming before you to seek you, to pray, we are just exchanging hurtful words, separating the church, choosing who to follow. <laughs> Lord, forgive us. Lord, forgive us for not understanding the seasons, yet you warned us. Lord, forgive us. Because the results are not healthy at all. The results are not good. No one wants to see their loved ones die like that. No one wants to see their countrymen die like that. Oh, Lord, forgive us. Lord, touch our hearts that are full of hatred. Because when there is a rise in the hatred, definitely people are going to fight. People are going to kill one another. Lord, Lord, forgive us for the seeds of hatred that were planted even when we were not yet born. Lord, forgive us. Lord, forgive us for not speaking the truth. Forgive us. We say we are wearing the, the armor of God, but the belt of truth is lacking. We've engaged in things that don't glorify God. We've engaged in not speaking the truth. And we've ended up killing one another. Lord, that's not what we want. Lord, that's not what we want. Lord, forgive us for not speaking the truth. For hiding the truth. And people don't know the truth. They just follow. The innocent are dying. Lord, forgive us. <laughs> Give us, Lord. The church is sleeping. The church is just looking for money. <laughs> we fail to repent. We fail to harm ourselves and stay away from our wicked ways. and we don't listen. Lord, forgive us. Lord, forgive us. That's not the Uganda we want.
kufuga na yetu na wafuga wafu. Njiri tunajibu ila wafu. Yesu tuyamba mnanga. Yesu tuyamba. Hameka ili zime mase. Hameka ili zime nonya chakulia. Hameka ili zime machala wakumanga tevali na mkwano.
Kwa tu juse mtima java na baba antu. Mitima miruwa di tata. Gawe kainzo kuchuonye mitima miruwa di. Mitima jiri mwavu sungu. Jiri mwe naku. Jiri mwe chiru ye. Jiri mwavu chaye. Ay tata sumo nga tuyambe. Kutuwa mbole chamba luchuavu chaye nga Uganda. At this time. The pearl of Africa cannot look like that. Don't take our name away. Lord, don't take our name away. Don't take our name away. Lord, as we are going to study your word, I pray that you intervene and you teach us. I'm just a vessel. You decrease and you increase. Give me the grace. Give me the courage to teach you what. I give you praise. I give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name, I believe and pray. Amen. days we are in, you're supposed to to back up one another but you're not supposed to shoot one another you cannot allow things to separate you you cannot allow politics to separate you that's what the devil wants because he knows when you people break up when you people hate each other you won't be able to fight back you need to come together because rioting does not glorify God. Rioting is part of the things God hates. Read Galatians. Rioting is part of the things God hates. And when God goes silent, just know sin is on the rise. He told you last month. <laughs> but because we know <laughs> the Lord warned us since 1995. How old are you? How old were you in 95? And how old are you now? <laughs> what does dividing us going to help? Warnings have been going on. You guys don't pay attention. People are dying every day. But some of you, because it's not in your house, you don't care. Why don't we wake up and work together than fighting? That's what the devil wants. What the devil is doing, people are sitting with one another to destroy other people. To destroy people's reputation that when you come out to talk, no one is going to listen. Because people have chose to listen to the luma mongering. We're going to read the book. It is in the book. This man died many years back. Luma mongering is sin. It's an international sin. It has destroyed nations. It has destroyed people. People sit and destroy one another and people have chosen to listen to rumors. It's in government, it's in church, it's in families. That people don't have even love to pray for one another. They don't have any love at all. You're going to rot in the house. Why? Because your neighbor was told that you talked about them. 
and they never sought to ask you. They believed the words they heard. And when such a season comes, you're going to die like rats. When the, ex the exterminator comes, he will just fire. I told you, death is roaming around and is going to use any opportunity he can get. He grabbed politics. He grabbed poverty. He's using anything available. He stood in marriages, breaking up married people. He stood in our tongues, using the word. People are using the word anyhow. Some people are using the word to curse one another. What kind of Jesus is that? There is no truth whatsoever. And people sit and listen to lies. And you come out hating someone when you don't even know the truth. Because when hatred sits inside, you're going to see wars. You've, you're, whatever you're seeing is just a tip of an iceberg. I warned the 40-year-olds, I told you guys, stay home. The devil is looking for you to wipe you out. He's looking to wipe out the young generation because the people who are dying in the streets are young. The generation that is going to take us to another level. He's destroying us, tearing us apart. And you have not yet woken up. He, he is going to use your best friend, your wife, your pastor. And if you are blind in the spirit, you're going to fall a victim. That one I assure you. Because I've seen many of you fell victims of things you have no idea about. And later you learn the truth and you're like, what is going on? And you're too ashamed. You're too proud even to apologize to one another. When the black and white thing started here, people who know the Lord were like, all we want is forgiveness. Because it is slave trade disturbing us. When I see people who know the Lord and you're spreading hatred, I wonder which Bibles do you read that don't tell you to forgive? Some of you continue on spreading it and I'm like, when you guys go to pray, what do you do? And definitely if you have hatred in your heart when you go to pray, the prophecies, all the prophecies you're going to see about that person you're fighting with. And you call them right prophecies. And you will keep destroying one another. Because that's what the devil wants. He wants the people in the camp to fight one another. When the Israelites started fighting one another, when God came down, death was on a rampage. They started choosing sides and separating themselves. Church, you can do better than that. If you know you know God, you can do better than that. You cannot pay evil for evil. It won't work. <laughs> mm. 
Let others see Christ in you. How do we see Christ in you? How do we see Christ in you? When I see someone spreading hatred, I stay away very far. Why? I protect my heart. I protect people I love. I told you if I was in the calling of spreading words, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But I chose to protect people because I love them. I chose. I chose. Because I knew I cannot afford to use my mouth to destroy. Because when I utter, they see destruction all the way. I was like, no, I'm not going to serve to masters. Let me choose to keep quiet. Let me choose to protect people. Because I don't want to see death simply because I got annoyed and I uttered words. But you guys, why can't you forgive one another? Because when you start using the word to beat one another, <laughs> you're going to bury yourselves. You can't go before the Lord to pray with anger. You cannot do that. see Christ in you. Open your Bibles in mouth. The times we are in are bad. People are supposed to go back and learn what salvation is all about. The time we are in, guys, you cannot be teaching people about money. Teach people about how to repent, how to forgive one another, how to walk right with God. Because when righteousness comes in the mix, money is obvious. But you're teaching people how to get money. When they get money and they die when they have it repented, when they die because when they are rich, how, how is money going to take them to heaven? In such a season, really. The season we are in is to prepare ourselves to walk right with God. The season we are in is to not to make money. Yes, we need the money, but money is going to come. A blessing comes when you walk right with God. Abraham walked right with God and God blessed him beyond imagination. Okay, we've seen you're rich, you have the beautiful wife. Now, can we see the Christ in you? We've seen you have your firstborns, we've seen your wives, we've seen your husbands. We've seen, can we see the Christ in you too? Because without Christ, trust me, it's called potter. When you're in such days, the protection gets limited if you don't walk with, right with Christ. You're not any special. You will find yourself the way you're seeing your other friends dying. Your only protection is Christ. Right now, those into witchcraft are also preparing themselves for sins. Right now, solution you have, Uganda, is to turn away from your wicked ways. If my people who are called by my name
You're not going to humble yourselves when you're rioting in the streets. Since when we are in, it's only going to be ego's wings. You want to understand that song and the ego's wings? Go and read Exodus chapter 19 and verse 4. The Lord carried Israel on ego's wings. Uganda, you're going to allow God to carry you on ego's wings. But that is going to come from you repenting and turning away from all wicked things but if you stay in your life as usual when Israel cried because of slavery the Lord had and sent them Moses then they got out they celebrated when they celebrated they forgot why because they never humbled themselves Uganda I told you when you went into atonement, people forgot. Why? Because they never humbled themselves. People forgot. What is going on concerns all of us. If you know you're a Ugandan and you carry a Ugandan passport and your bloodstream has Uganda in it, you're part of what is going on. And you know the current situation. There are men and the women outside Uganda. For them, it's a game. To them, it's a game. That part you don't know. It is because we don't tell one another the truth. The Bible says that when the truth, when you know the truth, it sets you free.
They are people who decided to put the country on the table. It is a betting now. And for them, they gain out of it. They are betting. Mark chapter 16. I will start from verse 11. Mark chapter 16 and verse 11. When they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they did not believe. After that, he appeared in a different form to two of them as they were walking along the way to the country. They returned to Jerusalem and told the others and told the others but they did not believe them either. Later Jesus appeared to the eleven disciples <coughs> because remember Judah had strangled himself he, he went and hanged himself simply because he had betrayed Jesus. And Jesus had warned him. He foretold him that. But because he wasn't seeing in the spirit, the way most of us, we are spiritually dead. Why? Because of hatred. Because the temple ceased to be for the Holy Spirit. Hence, you're not going to see in the spirit. When the spiritual eyes go blind, the devil is going to bring anything he wants. I don't know whether some of you sit there and you see who is doing the bad to you and for you go before the Lord and that's what you're praying for. Then you, you, you have people who see for you the prophets. You have your prophets, those ones, whose eyes only see who is destroying you. That is what they see. And they say it is from the Lord. There are things I just see and I'm like. Later Jesus appeared to the eleven disciples themselves as they were reclaiming at the table and he called them to account for their unbelief and hardness of heart because they had not believed those who had seen him after he had risen from death and he said to them go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation he who has believed in me and has been baptized will be saved from the penalty of God's wrath and judgment. But he who has not believed will be condemned. These signs our main celebrant is number 15. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Our title is Let Others See Christ in You. You go to preach the word, but how do you go to preach that word? Can you, that takes us back, can you walk the talk? I have seen people preach. There are people who come out to preach and you're like, if I don't change now, that is it. Jesus is coming back any one minute. But when uh, after they preach the word like this, and you find them, those ends, interacting or doing things with their friends, and they are saying things that come out of them, If at this era we still have people in church, I told you, 
Be careful with your new friends. There are some who are eating Jezebel's food that she prepares and puts on your table. The devil allow they allow the devil to move with them. For them their job is to make sure they destroy you. They make sure if they're near a pastor, if they're near a leader, they say all things that are very nasty about other people and they blind the eyes. And it gets so depressing when people know Christ. You teach about forgiveness. Why is it that you have failed to forgive that person they told you that talked about you? What is so hard? Why is it so easy to teach about it? Why is it that you fail to purpose, to decide? Because God wants us to work together, but you've put padlocks. Some of you are in positions that you are leaders. You're called to lead others. Now the time we are in, we are supposed to be interceding so much. Like, I don't know what you've been doing the whole season. I don't know. I, I looked at people's posts. Everyone is posting proof in Uganda. In my mind, I'm like, is this the first time you guys are praying for Uganda? Is this now when you wake up and you say you pray for Uganda now? It's like a woman or a man getting married. You start interceding for your marriage on your honeymoon night. And you expect the results. And remember you're praying in a panic mode. We love calling ourselves things we are not. Your actions have to speak Christ too, not only your words. People have failed to get to love Christ. They fail to understand who God is because those who are already there we look useless. The Bible called us spiritual useless because we are lukewarm and God is going to vomit us. When such a teaching comes that's when you hear that one wants to spoil that one who does. I'm like we are different. If we all preach about prosperity in such a time, you can go and they teach your money, it's fine. But make sure you're found ready. That one I'll keep telling you. I will keep telling you, but make sure your phone ready. Because you don't know what will happen tomorrow. Did you wake up knowing that the day will look like this? In your Bibles, you know. Matthew twenty eight. 
Then G Matthew 28 and verse 18, Jesus came up and said to them, All authority, all power of absolute rule in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. Help the people to learn of me. What are you guys doing to us? Instead of teaching us who Christ is, you're teaching us who a false prophet is. You're showing us who a false prophet is. See, Chirumam, it is what it is. You see people saying, ah, I can't mention the name so that we don't go back there. In my mind, I'm like, can you guys go and read your own Bibles? He's saying, Jesus came up and said to them, all authority, all power of absolute rule in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Verse 19, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. Some of you are supposed to be attending discipleship. But you refuse to attend because you don't respect the people God has anointed to do that. You don't have time. You always create other programs. When the time, this time, this season, you were all supposed to go through discipleship. What happened? Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. Help of all nations, open bracket, help the people to learn of me. Believe in me and obey my words. You are supposed to help people know who Christ is. Believe in Christ and obey the word. What do you do? Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, remaining with you perpetually, regardless of circumstance and on every occasion, even to the end of age. But for us, what do we do? Instead of teaching Jesus, we are teaching about other people. And this is done to the lowest levels. It is done, some of it is not in social media, that's why you don't know about it. Because when you find ministers of my age, eh, they were called into ministry, young as young as 20, 30, they are also in such things. And you're like, you, the only way you're going to be able to work with each other by understanding. When you don't understand, someone's calling, I warned you. I sent a message that you guys misunderstood. Whenever you misunderstand things, that is a problem. If you don't understand a particular teaching, ask the Holy Spirit. Don't just fight about it. When a teaching of repentance comes, people walk like this. Not You guys call it someone breaking your things. You start fighting. We are supposed to teach people to observe everything as we teach we walk in that if you're called in the fivefold ministries you're going to go back to the basics you're supposed to teach people how to walk with Christ who Christ is and how to obey the word
and by walking the talk. That is how they will see the Jesus you preach about. If it's about love, you don't just give it to a few. Because Jesus loved everyone. Jesus supported everyone. That is how we see the Jesus in you. But for you, if you are the type who separates intimate friends, for you, your job is to move here, make sure you, th those people in that particular area get to know who so and so is, then you move to another zone, then you move to another zone, and that is your job. It's going to be tough. Unfortunately, because you don't know the truth, people don't speak the truth. All they look for is to be loved. So they think when they come, I wrote something about manipulating. You're not going to be loved by manipulating people, bringing misunderstandings between people. It doesn't work like that. Because in such a time, we're supposed to be comforting one another, standing together and saying no to this, no to this, no to this. Violence is not a solution. That is not, that's not how it works. Why do so many who call themselves Christians hesitate to confess their faith in Jesus before the world? Perhaps it is because of the ingrained expectations of society which suggests that religion is taboo in polite company. It is understandable that people are put off by those who are aggressively authentic, auth enthusiastic about their beliefs, but Christians need to be witnesses for Christ. We need to be unashamed of our faith in Jesus Christ. It is, however, important to know when to speak and when to be quiet. There is one sure way to testify to your faith without offending other people, and that is to follow the example of Jesus Christ. There are some of your friends, yes, they sit and listen to you preach the word, but they are like, yeah, I can preach, I can listen to the word, but I can never get saved. Because if you do that to the person you know, now me who you die, who you don't know, how will it be? We have hindered people from knowing who Christ is. Because the belt of truth is not there. We just preach it. We cannot walk it. And you know, it gets difficult when someone is not available physically to defend themselves. One thing I told myself that I'll not do is to defend myself on phone. Mm -mm. I will not do that. If you choose to believe what you hear, please go ahead. I, I ask the Lord that if I did not do what is being said out there, I am not going to defend myself. Let them believe what they want. Why? I want to stop a fight. But if I want to put on a fight, I will go into the defensive mode. But things to do with God, I don't need to lift a finger. I'll just sit here and I leave you guys think that I did what I did. And I ask the Lord to forgive me. He told me to repent. I did it. Ask for forgiveness. And we continue. What is disturbing Uganda is nothing other than hatred.
There is one sure way to testify to your faith without offending other people. And that is to follow the example of Jesus Christ. His whole life was a testimony of commitment to his duty, sympathy, mercy, and love for all people, regardless of their rank or circumstances. This is the very best way to be a witness for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide you so that others will see Christ in everything you do and say. In this way, you will fulfill the command of the Lord. There are things we've done and Christ does not do. There is no day Christ stood and belittled anyone. There is no day. Yet people belittled Christ. I told you when, when Judas Iscariot sold his master, Jesus had all the right at the table to belittle him. Because he had already seen the heart. But he just said, whatever you do, do very fast. He told Peter that he would deny him. And Peter is like, I cannot, I cannot. Jesus never stood and shouted and said, But for us, what do we do? All we do is to destroy reputations after reputations after reputation. You belittle one another. I see old men belittling old men. And I'm like, now if you are my father and you're belittling another person's father, what do you expect from the children? Those are seeds you're planting and you're going to reap one day. You've not yet seen. Help me, Lord Jesus, to let the Holy Spirit live through me in such a way that others may know of your love for them. Amen. You can go read further and ask the Holy Spirit to speak more about his word. The book. We had started on praying. Praying for our government. In the in the book, experiencing God's power, shaping history through prayer and fasting. We had looked at good government is God's will. Okay. First of all, Paul called for supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks. If we were to choose... Apostle Sala Bunjo has been, it's been a while now, started last month. She's been teaching about thanksgiving. When do you guys get time to give thanks to God? Because you're going to start to give thanks to God for what in this season? You're breathing for Christ's sake. Thank God for all the years you have been making. Every year you make a birthday. Some women have four birthdays in a year because they want presents. Have some thanksgiving. Have some time to thank God. If we were to choose one time to cover all four activities, it would be prayer. The first duty of Christians meeting in fellowship is prayer. It is also their primary outreach. In the second verse, Paul said that prayer is to be offered for all men. 
This agrees with the prophecy of Isaiah 56 and verse 7 where God says, Mine, mine house shall be called a, a house of prayer. Let me read in my Bible. They use King James. The word says something else. Isaiah 56 and verse 7. Isaiah 56 and verse 7. All these I will I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house will be called a house of prayer for all the people. God is concerned with all men and all people. He expects his people to share his concern. Contrast this with the narrow, self-centered prayers of many professing Christians. Someone offered the following as a parado of the average church member's prayer. God bless me, my wife, my son, John, and his wife. Ask for no more amen. After all men, the first specific topic for prayer is kings and all that are in authority. In countries such as the United States, which have no monarchy, the word kings does not apply. In any case, whether there be a monarchy or not, the phrase all that are in authority indicates all those who are responsible for governing the nation. This may be summed up in the single word, the government. Thus, the first specific topic of prayer ordained by God for his people, meeting in fellowship, is the government. Extensive experience has convinced me that the vast majority of professional Christians never give any serious consideration to this topic in prayer. Why? Because most of you are very annoyed with government. I know people who are supposed to be praying for countries. They are very bitter. Very, very, very annoyed when you say, if you're here and you say we are praying for Trump, we first undress him proper. There was a time I was on Facebook and I saw a couple, pastors. Hey! And the rate at which black American pastors are dying, it is overwhelming and very sad. You think you guys are losing people? Oh. Extensive experience has convinced me that the vast majority of professional Christians never give any serious consideration to this topic in prayer. Not merely do they not pray for the government first, they scarcely pray for it at all. They pray regularly for groups such as the Sikh, and shuts in preachers, missionaries, evangelists, and unconverted. Anything and everybody but the one group that God puts first, the government. Why? Government rules everything. As much as church is supposed to be on top of government. But if you are a citizen, you have to abide by the rules. It is no extra exaggeration to see that many who claim to be committed Christians never press seriously for the government of their nation as much as once a week. When praying for the government, what specific petition are we exhausted, uh, exhorted to make? I have seen people cursing the president of Uganda, literally saying he should die. I sit and I'm like, he's still in the seat. And you, who is coming in power, your job is to plant a seed of love, is to pray for your fellow guys who are getting out. Why? Because you're coming in and we have to pray for you. Do you think if you don't plant the seeds now, 
what is going to happen to you it's like women when a man when a woman <laughs> i wonder a man who who leaves a woman for another woman and you're like by the time he left the other one you think he cannot leave you The seats you're aiming for are full of things that you need to uproot. And you do that in prayer, not in riots. I don't understand the people on your teams who know Christ. I don't understand which kind of Bibles they read. I don't understand your spiritual advisors. I don't get the point. Billy Graham... He's one of the spiritual advisors who advised presidents for years. And those who listened had a good time. And those who thought they were above the law of God had fire. When you don't believe in God and you fight the men of God, you're in trouble. I don't know who are your spiritual mentors. I don't know. And I don't know which Bibles they read. People literally curse. And in my mind, I'm like, you're also coming in the government. Do you know that we are supposed to pray for you? If you have the guts of cursing what is inside, you think you won't get someone to curse you. You don't plant evil for evil. You don't do that. I don't know what kind of leaders we are getting. But the picture you guys have shown us is something else. But Uganda belongs to the Lord. In coming government, you should be planting seeds of love. You should be promoting peace. You should be following the rules and regulations that are put in place. Why? We want to see the kind of people you, you are so that you take on the baton. Because at the end of the day, whether you fight, whether you do what, people have to cast the vote. When praying for the government, what specific petition are we exhaust, exhorted to make? In the second phase, verse, Paul answered that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Does the kind of government we live under affect the way we live? Obviously it does. Therefore, if we desire a good way of life, logic and self-interest alike indicate that we should pray for our government. This was brought home to me, in that is Derek Prince, in a new way when I applied for the United States citizenship. Like all who make application, I was required to study in outline the basic principles and purposes of the American Constitution. Whether he liked the government or not, he had to do that. As I meditated on these, I asked myself, what was the real objective of those who originally drafted the Constitution? I concluded that their objective could be summed up with complete accuracy in the words of Paul, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. The authors of the Constitution had as their objective a state in which every citizen would be free to pursue his own legitimate interests without interference from other citizens or the government, but with the protection of the government and its officers. Judged by the language that they use, most if not all of those who drafted the constitution viewed such a state 
as being possible only under the sovereign protection and the and favor of Almighty God. Christian citizens to the United, of the United States should forever be thankful that the basic charter of their nation agrees so exactly with the purposes and principles of government ordained by Scripture. Continuing in First Timothy chapter two, Paul said in verse three, "For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior." The pron pronoun this refers back to the topic of verse 2, which we have summarized as good government. If we replace the pronoun this by the phrase to which it refers, we are arrive at the following statement. Good government is good and acceptable in the sight of God. More simply still, good government is the will of God. Here is a statement with the most far-reaching consequences. Do we really believe it? To judge by the words and actions of many Christians and many Christians, to judge by the words and actions of many Christians, they have little or no expectation of good government. Why, we lost faith long time ago. They are more or less resigned to the fact that the government will be inefficient, wasteful, arbitrarily, corrupt, and just. For my part, I have studied this question long and carefully in the light of logistic and of scripture. I have come to a deep conviction concerning God's will in this area. Guys, have you bothered to ask what God's will is in the matter? What is God saying about the situation of the country? Because instead of you sitting and shouting and fighting and beating one another, cursing one another out, sending people to hell and to death, why don't you go and fall in, on your knees and cry out to the Lord? The will of God is good government. Why God desires good government? Moving on verse 4, we find that Paul, verse 4 of First uh, Timothy chapter 2, Paul stated the reason why good government is the will of God. God desires, what is God's will in all this? Before you people bring your, your will and who you want and all other things, what does God want? I told you. The Lord wants a David, not a Saul. It is not about the age, by the way. You guys are misinterpreting things. A man after God's own heart is David. Whether young or old, is he after God's own heart? Is he going to put God's agendas on the table as he's governing the, gov the, the country? That is what it means. It has nothing to do with age. I see how you guys use your scriptures, those ends, and I wonder. A man after God's own heart. If you're bringing your own agendas to rule Uganda, you're misplaced. The Lord wants a man after God's own heart. That is a David. It has nothing to do with age. I will leave it to you. Time to go and seek the Lord and ask him what's your will. God desires all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. God desires the salvation of all men so intensely that he made it possible by the supreme sacrifice of history. The atoning death of Jesus Christ on the cross. Through faith in Christ's atonement, salvation has been made available. 
to all men. However, for men to be saved, they must first come unto the knowledge of the truth concerning Christ's atonement. This is possible only if they have the gospel preached to them. Paul presented the, this issue very plainly in Romans chapter 10 and verse 13 to 14. For whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Unless the gospel is preached to them, men cannot avail themselves of the salvation purchased for them by Christ's atonement. We may sum up the logic of this very, of this very simply. God desires all men to be saved. For this is God desires all men to be saved. For this is necessary for them to come into the knowledge of the truth. Knowledge of the truth comes only through the preaching of the gospel. The gospel, not the gossip. Therefore, God desires the gospel to be preached to all men. It remains only to trace the connection between good government and the preaching of the gospel. We may do this by asking ourselves one simple question. Which kind of government makes it easier to preach the gospel good government or bad government to obtain an answer to this question we may briefly contrast the effects of good and bad government in so far as they relate to the preaching of the gospel on the one hand good government maintains law and order it keeps communications open preserves civil liberty and protects freedom of speech and freedom of assembly. It is not worthy that nearly all these points are specifically covered by the Constitution of the United States. In short, good government without becoming involved in religious controversy provides a climate in which the gospel can be preached effectively. On the other hand, when I came to the U.S., in 2016, you could not preach the word of God, especially at school, at work. They can jail you. Saying Merry Christmas was a taboo. They can send you to jail. Because I came in at the regime of Democrats. Them and God, things don't work well with them. At its worst, bad government either restricts or totally suppresses the universal right of all men to believe in God and to express their faith by public worship and proclamation. In one degree or another, we see these conditions in countries under co communist rule today. Our conclusion, therefore, is that good government facilitates the preaching of the gospel, while bad government hinders it. For this reason, good government is the will of God. We are now in the position to present the teaching of 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 to 4, in series of simple logic steps. Number 1, the first ministry and outreach of believers as we meet together in regular fellowship is prayer. Number two, the first specific topic for prayer is the government. Number three, we are to pray for good government. Number four, good de God desires all men to have the truth of the gospel preached to them. Number five, good government facilitates the preaching of the gospel while bad government hinders it. Number six, therefore good government is the will of God. I am going to stop there. I will come back tomorrow and we do that, but not in the morning. My time is crazy, so that's why I pop up. Let's pray and I leave. 
think about it. Sit in your houses and think about what ask yourself what does God want? Don't assume. You're all going to learn to go deep into the Lord and welcome the presence of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will speak to you what he wants before you go ahead to riot. Sometimes I sit here and I'm like, Lord, I wish you can open up people and people get to see one another inside what we think, what we believe, what we want. People have selfish motives. There are people who are willing to do anything. Anything. Pe there are people who are willing to hide the truth as in they are willing and, and we follow one another without knowing the truth. But let me tell you something. Every day God gets tired of us lying. The day he will undress you, you will not like it. Actually, it's you who will undress yourself. Why? When you, when you reject God, he leaves. Consequences of rejecting God. Uganda. You look like this book now. You've always been like this. A nation at the crossroad. Go get to that book and help yourself. Have you rejected me? Take this warning. If you continue rejecting me, to the measure I love you and to the measure I call you is the measure I will hate you. If you reject my call, this is the bigness with which I will strike you. All that good I have spoken about to come upon you, I will reject it. Then will I rise up and I will allow my wrath to come upon you and I will forget your name. No longer shall it be mentioned. The day you will appear before me, I will say to you, I never knew you. I never knew. Had a plan for you. I will totally forget you if you reject me. When I read the book of Jeremiah, you guys are something else. There's a time I was teaching, I told you on a Monday the word winnowing started popping up. That was last month. And Dr. Mlinde was teaching on Tuesday. It came back so strong and I'm like, what's going on? Then I went and looked for winnowing. I'm like, winnowing. Then I remembered I had talked about it with kids in uh, February. February and March. I went back. I'm like, okay, the, where is that scripture? I looked for it. There were different scriptures about winnowing. I'm like, okay, let's look at this. What is going on? I need to do a study. What's not happening? I started asking myself questions. I'm like, Lord, what's happening? Then I saw Jeremiah. I'm like, okay, Jeremiah, today what are you telling us? But because for you, you it's okay. Now, I no longer have. When I looked at Jeremiah 15 and verse 6, because I went back, I went back, I've been reading this book back and forth. I'm like, consequences of rejecting God. Now I go to the winnowing in Jeremiah. I'm like, okay. And verse 6, verse 5 actually. For who will have pity on you, O Jerusalem? Remove Jerusalem and put Uganda. Or who will mourn for you? Or who will turn aside to ask about your wealth, your welfare? Verse 6, you have abandoned, rejected me, says the Lord. You keep going backward. Therefore, I shall stretch out my hand against you and destroy you. Right now, it might not be his hand. It might be his silence. No, go and ask him. Me, I'm just reading for the script. I'm just a girl in the publishing house. Please go and read the word and ask the Lord what is going on. Why that now? Verse 7. Verse 6. You have abandoned, rejected me, says the Lord. You keep going backward. Unfortunately, 
you guys don't know that the Lord warned about the death of the pastor, the first pastor that brought chaos in the country. The Lord sent a message that two people are going to die, a pastor and one in government, but the pastor's death is going to bring chaos and confusion in the nation. For you guys, you don't know that part. You think it just happened, obvious. And you're just following blind. Following blind, you don't ask the Lord, why is the confusion when it is time to sit in classes and learn what the Lord is telling us that is going to help us get out of the season? You find thousands of people sitting the other side listening to people fighting one another and the word of God is going on the other side and people don't share the word. You've not woken up that that is the work of the name, the devil, to bring confusion and destruction. You keep going back, word. Therefore, I shall stretch out my hand against you and destroy you. I am tired of delaying your punishment. Verse 7. I will winnow. Open bracket. Sort. Separate. Close the bracket. Then with the winnowing fork. At the gates of the land, I will deprive them of children. I will destroy my people. They did not repent and turn from their evil ways. I will make their widows more numerous, more before me than the sand of the seas. I will bring against them, against the mother of the young men, a destroyer at noonday. I will suddenly cause anguish and terror to fall on her. When I read that message, I started seeing death and I'm like, Lord, what's not happening? I'm like, Lord, help us. But how how is the Lord going to help us when you guys are not listening? You're not asking the Lord. Heavenly Father, King of glory, we thank you for this time. We give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor. I thank you for your word. Help us understand your ways. Help us understand how to do your things. Help us to walk in your word. Open our eyes, open our ears to see what you see, Lord, to hear what you hear, Lord. Because our eyes and ears are your tools. Give us an understanding of the seasons so that we equip ourselves and don't become victims of the schemes of the devil. Father, King of glory, intervene and take over. I pray for Uganda. Father, your hand, let your hand touch Uganda. Let there be a change of heart among people, among political politicians, among the fivefold ministries. Father, I pray that your people think about their moves before they move. I pray that your people think about their words before they remove, they, they spread the words. I pray that people think about the words they keep telling one another that are bring destruction in people's hearts. Father, intervene. And Holy Spirit, forgive us. I seal this life in the blood. Let it bring deliverance. Let it bring understanding. Many people have misunderstood your word. And they call it, people are stealing ministries, people want to take other people, people are looking for numbers and friends, and they keep forgetting that it's God's work. Because all they want to hear is chitwale, chitwala, ujavuga moto kencho, jakupumbirwa, ebyobavi jumbira. When you start repentance, there you're destroying them. Lord, talk to your people and talk to your leaders. You chose them. Because everyone comes out and they say, the Lord called me, it is the Lord who told me to start this. That means you called them. Talk to your men and women to come to a table and learn how to work together and not destroy one another. Because when they fight, the ship suffers. And that leads to destruction because that's what the enemy wants. Open our eyes. 
to see like the eagle's eye. I give you praise, I give you glory. Lord, I pray for the names I see. I see Prince Victor Kalimera. I pray for peace and Jagway, and I pray for Drusilla Abujo. Lord, speak to them. Speak to their hearts. Bless the works of their hands. Protect them and their families. They stand in the gap for others as a point of contact. For those who are already seated behind there that don't come to the front line, Father, meet them at their point of need. Those who have lost loved ones, Father, I pray that you comfort them at such a time as this. Comfort them, Lord, and heal our land. Heal our land, Lord. Heal our land, Lord. I pray for peace, peace that surpasses understanding. I pray for wisdom, Lord. I pray for intercessors to wake up and pray and intercede for the nations. I give you praise, I give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name, I believe and pray. Amen. Have a, a good morning, those who are in the morning, and have a good night to those who are going to sleep. See you when I can. Make sure you attend the EMPs, please.